Hi, welcome to First Baptist. This is Pastor John Cress, and I'm glad you have joined us for another time in the Word of God as we look to the book of Philippians. A few weeks ago, we were talking about how there was conflict coming against the church from outside. And Paul gave encouraging words there. Then last week we talked about Paul raising questions and raising them in a rhetorical way, saying, if you have this, if you have this, those things included the consolation in Christ, the comfort of love, the fellowship of the Spirit, and the affection and love of God. If you have these and you do, and you have them in great abundance, then do this. And today is where we find out what we are to do. Let us read Philippians 2, verses 2 through 4. Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. This is a personal request from Paul for the church. He was the one who brought the gospel to the city of Philippi in Macedonia, northern, north of Greece. He was the one who brought this wonderful, joy, joyous news and helped see a church establish. Now he's off establishing churches other places, but he wants to see his church in Philippi not only just stay at, at this new birth stage, but to grow. And one way to do that is to be united. A plant cannot grow if one leaf wants to grow and everyone wants to stagnate. That plant, that one leaf will just be the death of the whole plant. It's got to grow it harmoniously. Another example is the human body. We say we want to, as a kid, maybe we're only a middle schooler, but we're only four foot six. And we desire to be like our older siblings who were on the high school basketball team. How can we do that? We don't have the height. Lord, will you give me at least long legs? You look pretty funny with legs going up to four foot and then maybe a one foot body on top of that. You're going to have wrong proportions and that's going to affect your health. And that is what Paul is trying to say. I want you to be united because all of you are important. Not just the legs, but the arms, the torso, the head. They ought to grow proportionally. They need to encourage, be encouraged and grow. And that is what he wants us to do. By being of the same mind, of the same love, of the same spirit and purpose. We can't just consent, yes, yes, this is what we believe. We're all on the same page. We're good. You may be on the same page, but... If your heart's not it, but mine is, we're going to have conflict. If we're on the same page, but doing it for different purposes, you're going to try to lean the program one way, and I will lead another. If we don't have love, it's going to go nowhere. We're going to be tearing each other apart to try to get our own agendas. This is what Paul is crying against. He says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind. And how do we do this? Well, he begins laying out a little process. He says, first of all, do not look out for your own personal interests. Instead, look out for the interests of others. Ooh. A lot of times we prefer our interests first. Word number one. God says, no, you're not. I am. <laughs> he is. That's where it should be. Others our second. Then our needs will be met. It's not that they are important to us, but what we find out is when we are serving others, glorifying God, we will be blessed. If we try to shortcut any other way, taking out God, taking out others, and just promoting ourselves, again, we're having a stunning growth pattern. We need to glorify God, build up others, and do what we can. 
we should not just look out for our own personal interests, but again, for the interests of others. But be humble in the matter. Seek to glorify God humbly. Building one another up. Not just looking down. Let me help you. You are in great need. You're not as good as I am. No. We realize we're all on the same page. Sinners who need a loving and forgiving God. And therefore we encourage, build one another up. We need to just work and make sure that we realize no one is more important than anyone else. Whether someone has a greater education, a greater position, greater amount of influence, a greater amount of finances, they're no different than anyone else, than the one who is without food, without an education, without anything. It's usually those who can actually bring more. Because those who have the power, the influence, the education, can easily get puffed up. And they get so puffed up that they forget the others. That they become detrimental and still helpful. But one who has nothing usually realizes it. And just says, here's what I have. Can you use me? Can you use my gifts? Can you just use my presence? And if a church is wise, if a fellowship is wise, and full of love, they will see that and say, yes, you are the missing piece that we've been needing, and we also want to uplift you because you not only are helping us, but we can see we can help you. When we are working together, so much more can be accomplished. But again, it's not just a mental consent. And it's not taking on a sense of priority of one is better than anyone else. But realizing that we are all sinners who need each other. And more importantly, who need God. Join with me in prayer. Dear Lord, we're talking about this whole issue of humbleness and just putting away our own vain glory, our own self-promotion. Help us to be united in our humility though, dear Lord. A lot of times we will say we are humble and we are thinking, well, in regards to doing things, yes. But it's usually those things when we're maybe doing it by ourselves. When other people start getting into the picture, dear Lord, maybe people whom we feel uncomfortable with, or whom we feel either superior over or maybe even inadequate, we shy away from. We get scared. But dear Lord, your fear, your love casts out all fear. Help us to realize we're all actually in that same place, on that same boat, of sin. We need our Savior to bail us out. But at the same time, we need to help bail out our brothers and sisters as they help bail us out as well. Christ is the, the only one who can save. But there are many hands which can help the boat. Help us you be united in, in mind and spirit so whether we are doing evangelistic outreaches, whether we are doing works of ministry, whether we are helping feed the hunger, helping to give water to the thirsty, helping healing the sick, or just being a friend, that we do so with the right attitude. Show us what that attitude is by your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you next week. Until then, be blessed in the Lord.